Ever wondered why too much of a good thing can be bad? Take positivity for instance. Let's pull back the curtain on something called toxic positivity. This is the over-the-top, one-size-fits-all approach to being upbeat and optimistic, no matter what life throws our way. It paints a picture of a world where it's all sunshine and rainbows, all the time. But here's the thing, life isn't always like that. Now imagine suppressing your genuine emotions, dismissing your valid concerns, and ignoring your actual experiences in the pursuit of perpetual positivity. It's like trying to hold a beach ball underwater, sooner or later it's going to pop up, and often with a lot of force. Toxic positivity can be harmful because it denies us the full spectrum of human emotions and experiences. We are complex beings and our emotions are part of who we are. In essence, toxic positivity is the denial of certain human emotions and experiences. So, what's wrong with being too positive you might ask? Well, let's talk about that. When positivity becomes toxic, it can invalidate our genuine emotions. Instead of allowing us to feel, process and understand our emotions, it forces us to suppress them. This creates a guilt trip for feeling negative emotions which is unhealthy. Feelings, both positive and negative, are integral to our human experience. They help us navigate our world, and by denying them, we are avoiding an authentic human emotional experience. It's like trying to paint a rainbow with only one color. Moreover, toxic positivity can stunt personal growth. It creates a barrier that prevents us from addressing and learning from our negative experiences. It can also lead to emotional suppression, isolation and feelings of shame. Imagine being in a room full of people, but you feel alone because you can't express your true feelings. That's what toxic positivity does. Toxic positivity, therefore, can be a silent killer of authentic emotional experiences. Now that we know the harm, how do we recognize toxic positivity? Well, let's delve into the key signs that may indicate its presence. One major red flag is the suppression of true feelings. If you find yourself or someone else constantly hiding behind a smile, even when it's clear that things aren't okay, that's a warning signal. Another sign is feeling guilty for experiencing negative emotions. Life isn't always sunshine and rainbows, and it's perfectly okay to feel sad, angry, or frustrated. If these feelings are met with guilt, it's likely a result of toxic positivity. Also, beware of minimizing other people's experiences with positive advice. If someone's hardships are brushed aside with comments like, just look on the bright side, it tends to invalidate their feelings, which is not positive at all. Lastly, shaming others for expressing anything less than positivity is a big no-no. Everyone has the right to express their emotions freely. Recognizing these signs is the first step towards addressing toxic positivity. Scene script. Let's now delve into how to tackle this issue. Overcoming toxic positivity begins with acceptance. Acceptance of all emotions, both the radiant and the stormy ones. It's about recognizing that it's okay to feel upset, frustrated, or anxious. These emotions don't make you weak, they make you human. Next, we foster balanced and authentic positivity. This isn't about ignoring the negative but acknowledging it, understanding it, and learning from it. It's about finding the silver lining, not painting over the cloud. When others share their emotions with us, we must practice active listening and validation. It's not about offering solutions or bright side perspectives, but about being present, being empathetic, and letting them know their feelings are valid and heard. And if the weight of your emotions becomes too heavy to carry alone, remember the importance of seeking professional help. Therapists and counselors are there to guide us through our emotional journey. Remember, it's okay not to be okay sometimes. Embrace your genuine emotions, for they make you human.